Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. Today we're going to be going over a tier list for the post Briar, Arada, and Ban of Plunder Run and Ball Lightning tier list. Um, so we're going to be looking at how the meta looks in Classic Constructed after the Ban of Plunder Run, the Ban of Ball Lightning, and the Arada of Briar to where she can only make one embodiment of Earth on each of her turns. Um, obviously, because of this, Briar and as a result some of the other Rune Blades that used um, Plunder Run or other heroes that use Plunder Run are going to be weaker. Heroes that use the Ball Lightning are going to be weaker, and obviously Briar in general is going to be weaker. So uh, we'll kind of start there. Um, Briar is going to be B tier now. Obviously, she was S tier, but she got uh, a lot of cards taken away from her. You know, she got like maybe 18 total cards if you played all nine um, Ball Lightning and all nine Plunder Run. Most decks didn't, but that's at least 12 cards if you played six of each, which was more typical. Um, so it's at least 12 cards taken away and a severe errata to make her weaker. So Briar is just, I think, probably down from S tier to B tier for now until people figure out how to kind of fix her and resolve the situation after those bans. Um, we also have Chain here in B tier, who I think is maybe a little stronger than Briar right now, but he also lost Plunder Run, um, which was pretty important to Chain. So that Plunder Run ban hurt Chain as well and made it his turns a little less powerful. The other hero hurt by these bands, um, or one of the other heroes hurt by these bands, is Lexi, specifically Lightning Lexi. Lightning Lexi really liked Ball Lightning, and not having access to it anymore is going to hurt her. Um, Ice Lexi is also getting weaker, because Ice Lexi particularly preyed on the, can, uh, the aggro decks like Briar. She had quite a good Briar matchup, and with the aggro decks getting weaker, um, Light Ice Lexi is going to get weaker as well. I think the last hero getting hurt here by the Plunder Run ban, or one of the last ones getting hurt here by the Plunder Run ban, is Katsu, who unfortunately, you know, I loved Katsu. He's probably my second favorite hero after Bravo, um, and it hurts to see this, but Plunder Run was pretty important to, to Katsu. Red Plunder Run was really powerful. He was already probably in C tier, so I don't think he went down anymore, um, but it definitely didn't help out that the C tier hero uh, got hurt a little more. We're going to move on to the S tier here. I just wanted to discuss those few heroes. So with Briar getting hurt, a lot of the heroes that were weak to Briar, that were strong before Briar, are going to be strong again. So that is Dash here, as well as Prism. Um, these two heroes had a kind of a bad Briar matchup, but were strong without Briar in the meta. So Briar being weaker makes them a lot stronger. Um, they're both pretty control -y decks, and they have good matchups into, you know, a lot of the field, right? So Dash, actually it's a good Prism matchup, and Dash is kind of going to beat up on almost all the decks in the meta. Um, she's probably the premier deck right now. Uh, she beats up on, on stuff in general. She's she's quite powerful. Um, her weakness is going to be what one of Prism's weaknesses also, who is our boy Reinar, who has made his way up from, I think, C tier last tier list, but Reinar is actually going to be A tier now because he has a very good matchup, very good matchup into control decks. Uh, he's basically known as the control killer, um, and the reason, the only reason he's not an S tier in a control meta is because he just doesn't have as good of a card pool right now, and uh, if his card pool was a little more powerful, he definitely would be an S tier. He doesn't have quite enough powerful cards to put him there, but because he's a really good dash matchup and prism matchup, Reinar has made his way up to A tier right now, which is awesome to see, and I'm very happy for all my um, Reinar players who are out there crushing these two powerful control decks right now. Rounding out S tier, we've got Bravo and we've got Viserai here. Um, Viserai sticking around in S tier, the only Rune Blade that wasn't really hurt by the bands. Uh, he didn't really use Plunder Run, obviously he didn't use Ball Lightning. And he is a pretty decent matchup into these other S tier heroes. Um, all of the S tier heroes kind of can compete against each other in one way or another. Um, Bravo, for example, has a good Viscerai matchup, but maybe not the best Dash or Prism. Um, Dash has a good uh, Prism and Bravo matchup, but maybe not the best Viscerai matchup. Viscerai has a good Dash and Prism matchup, but may maybe not the best Bravo matchup, right? So they all kind of compete against each other in one way or another. Um, and these are, I would say, the strongest heroes in S tier right now. I think I would probably organize it like this. Um, with Dash as the strongest, then Viscerai, then Prism, and then Bravo. Um, Bravo because he does have a bit of a weakness to Prism and Dash. 
Um, but I would say these are the four strongest heroes in the game right now. It's nice to see some diversity and only one rune blade. Rounding out A tier here, we have um, Bolton, who actually has a pretty solid matchup into Dash. Actually, a quite good matchup into Dash, as well as into Prism. He's another deck that kind of preys on these control lists. Um, and so Raiden Bolton specifically is going to be, have a good matchup into, into this Dash, into this Prism, into these more controlly decks. Um, so similar to Reinar, I believe Bolton was maybe in B tier before, but he got bumped up to A tier because he has such a good control matchup. And then lastly, we've got Oldham here. Um, Oldham, I think, is hurt by these bands because he did have a good matchup into Briar, and he doesn't have the best matchup into Dash or Prism, but he's just such a strong hero with such a strong card pool. Um, I have a feeling he's never going to fall much, much lower than A tier until we have a lot of new cards and the meta changes significantly. But at least for now, pre-Everfest, pre-additional pre sets, right? I think Bravo, or excuse me, I think Oldham is going to be pretty stuck around A tier, maybe maybe B tier, but he's going to be A tier for now, just kind of sticking around. He can beat up any aggro deck. He pretty much beats any aggro deck. Um, so, you know, he'll still have a great matchup into all these all these aggro decks that are still here. And uh, yeah, he's just always going to be around, always going to be quite powerful, um, and he's just going to hope to not play into Prism. Next, we're going to move on to our... Actually, I'm going to make sure this is the right order. Yeah, I think this is probably the right order for A tier, and for S tier, and for B tier. So we're going to move on to C tier here. Um, we're going to have Dorinthia in here. So Dorinthia is going to be right here. Um, unfortunately, the problem with Dorinthia is that if you know how to play into Dorinthia, and you know how to block her properly, she's just not very good. So in a competitive sense, a lot of pro players, pro players, high-level players... Um, believe that Dorinthia is never going to be good again unless Warrior just gets a really big boost. But Dorinthia particularly preys on inexperienced players. Um, and she's just, if you know how to beat her, she's just not that powerful, unfortunately. Levia is our last C-tier hero. She's going to be right there. Um, she also gets a bit of a boost into these control decks like Reinar. But unfortunately, she doesn't get as much Intimidate as Reinar does. And Intimidate is what makes his control matchup so good. So, you know, she's a little better right now, but still not significantly better. Um, her, She just doesn't have that strong of a card pool. I mean, I'd love to be proven wrong, but I think Levia is just not in a great spot. She's going to need a lot more powerful cards to be a powerful hero. Um, and then in our D tier, we have Kano and Azalea, right? Um, Azalea and Kano kind of been the two weakest heroes in the game for a while. Um, Kano was doing well for a bit because he actually had a good Briar matchup, but now that Briar's weaker again, he has a pretty awful control matchup in general. Um, so does Azalea. So these heroes maybe had a chance against Briar, but are just not in a good spot at all right now. Um, that is it for the classic constructed tier list here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope everything made sense in terms of where the heroes are positioned. Um, Everfest is going to shake things up in about a month. Um, actually less, I believe. I think it comes out February 4th, if I'm correct. So about two weeks and three days from the vi filming of this video. So less than three weeks from the filming of this video. So it's going to shake things up. Um, we'll see what happens there. There's going to be a ProQuest season <clears throat> a few weeks after Everfest and ProQuest. Um, I'll be traveling to about five ProQuest or so um, and trying to get first place at a ProQuest, which gets you an invite to the Pro Tour. Um, and that'll be with Everfest cards, so you'll see a pretty significant shakeup there. But before we get to Everfest, for the next two or so weeks, this is the meta. This is what I recommend playing at your local armory if you're looking to win one of these top four decks. Um, I'll have a Bravo video coming out in a few days for my favorite hero, Bravio, Bravo, on kind of a new take on him. But for now, this is what I think the tier list is. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and comment. I'll try to answer any comments any questions you have, and I'll see you guys next time.